Father, we thank you for today. Lord, we thank you for all that you do. We give you glory and praise for all things. And we thank you for this time together. We thank you for the safe travels of Stephen Forrester and Marie. And come this morning to just bless us with your word. We thank you for it. Bless their efforts. Bless their ministry. Bless all that they do. We give you the glory for it all. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Stephen and Marie Forrester. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there he is. Today I've thrown him off a little bit. <laughs> we, your, uh, your service, of course, starts at 8.30. And this morning I made a very deep doctrinal ministry-changing decision. 8.30 services are against my religion. <laughs> For most of you, that's not so bad, right? I mean, you get up in the morning, you have church a little bit earlier, maybe a little, little before the other people in town, but then you're done. You can go for a late breakfast or an early lunch. You can beat the Methodist to the big boy. It's wonderful if you can do that. In our, in our case, um, your service starts at 8.30. We had to be here at 7.30 to set up our equipment. We had a 20-minute drive before that. And then I know you find this hard to believe, but we do not wake up in the morning looking this beautiful. So we had to get up even earlier before that. Hopefully the baby's going to cooperate today. He's usually a wonderful trailer. Uh, sitting down relaxing. This is my wife Marie. We are from Michigan. We traveled over 2,000 miles to be with you folks. So you better appreciate it. <laughs> we, are, we sing gospel music. We play a variety of instruments. We're going to bring you a little different service than maybe you normally do this morning. We'll see what the Lord has for us. Here's an old hymn you probably recognize called Redeem. <clears throat> sing it this way. It's more cowboy church sound. Reading is so happy in Jesus, no language my rapture can tell. I know that the light of his presence with me and continually dwell. songs in the night.
morning. We are glad to be here with you folks. It's our first time to Arizona. We've been here just a little over a week now singing. We, uh, we have scheduled 13 concerts slash worship services in 17 days. So, yeah. so I think you folks are number six or seven now. So if we, if we look a little worn out and confused, we are. <laughs> but it's good to be with you folks. <clears throat> My name is Stephen Forrester. I'm 27 years old. I'll be 28 next month. I am about to celebrate 10 years of traveling in the ministry. So I started when I was 18 with my brother Joshua Forrester. For five years, we traveled as the Forrester Brothers, traveled all over just the state of Michigan with the two of us. And then in uh, July of 2013, my little brother got married. His wife came on board, and we went from being the Forrester Brothers to the Forrester Brothers family. Traveled did that way for a little over a year, and then I got married in November of 2014. So we became the Forrester Brothers family 2.0. <laughs> did that for a little bit, and then uh, in November of 2016, they stepped off the road so that he could pursue a new calling from God as a youth pastor. So now it's Stephen and Marie Forrester traveling, but we decided that rather than having a duet, we prefer a trio, but this time we decided to expand the group by growing our own members. So, uh, little Stephen, Stephen Glenn Forrester II, was born May 24th of last year, 7 pounds, 1 ounce, 20 inches long. Screaming to prove he had his daddy's lungs, to say the most. <laughs> but uh, he's an absolute joy. Now, when we found out we were going to have a, our first baby, we were overjoyed, and we decided straight out of the gate, boy or girl, we didn't care. Babies are a blessing from God either way. We're fine with that, as long as they can play drums. That's all we're going to And he can. He just can't quite reach the kick pedal yet. We're working on that. But this is my wife, Marie. Now, as I said, I'm from Michigan. She is not. She's actually from the great state of Wisconsin just about the very top of Wisconsin, right about the middle, right up the top, a little town called Minocqua, Wisconsin. If you think it gets cold where you live, or you think it got cold here last night, <laughs> where she's from, they had, about four years ago, they had actual record temperatures, hit the books at 50 below zero. Oh. Mm -hmm. Now that was pretty extreme, but 20 below zero is very common for them. <laughs> And they had entire months that year where it never got above zero. So when she found out she was going to marry a guy from the central part of Michigan, she thought, I'm going to Florida! <laughs> it, it does feel like that to her. But we're, we're glad to be here with you folks. Now, we actually met on uh, ChristianMingle.com, of all places. Some people ask that. How did you guys meet? How does a girl from Michigan meet a guy from Wisconsin? Or a guy from Michigan meet a girl from Wisconsin? Uh, we, we met on ChristianMingle.com. Our first uh, online contact was April 29th, 2014. Uh, I drove up to meet her on June 2nd. I popped the question August 13th. We got married November 14th. <laughs> I saw a good thing and I grabbed it quickly. So <laughs> People have asked me, why would you do that so quickly? What was the point of rushing through all that? And my answer is always the same. I had to marry her while she still thought I was the greatest guy in the world. <laughs> I knew I couldn't maintain that for long. We're going to sing and play some different songs for you. Right now we're going to grab our instruments. Let me grab my guitar. Now, when we were uh, courting of all of about 20 minutes, um, when I found out she could sing, I thought, praise God from whom all blessings flow. You know, this is going to work out nice. And then she told me she could play instruments. And I thought, okay, what do you play? She says, well, I play piano, but my specialty is the accordion. And I thought, okay, that's pretty unique. Um, now, I don't know about immediately right here, but where I'm from in Michigan, the accordion culturally is kind of yesterday's instrument. Not too many people still play the accordion in Michigan. Where she's from, in the northern part of Wisconsin, the accordion is huge, culturally. They still have entire festivals of accordion music up there. It's a really big deal in Wisconsin. So I thought, okay, maybe we can make that work, or perhaps my gospel music's about to take on a polka flavor. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, since we've been married, we've recorded several instrumentals with her. This is our newest and by far our hardest one we've ever done. It's a medley. We call this the Blood of Jesus medley. It starts off with nothing but the blood of Jesus then goes into are you washed in the blood, and then finally power in the blood. And if we can keep it all together, it's going to be a lot of fun with instrument changes and key changes, but depending on how this goes, it's either going to be really fun or really funny. One of the two. <laughs> but we call it the blood of Jesus method. <laughs>
on a Sunday night. The first three songs went great. We had a wonderful time. The song we just did was going to be song number four. And uh, right as I was introducing the song, which I just did a minute ago, the power went out <laughs> all through the church. And so I thought, okay, now what? So while the pastor was going to check on the power, I went over to their piano. My electric piano died. I went over to their piano and just played a couple songs while we're waiting to see what's going on. The pastor comes back and says, it's not the church. The power has gone out all over the town. <laughs> so then I assessed the situation and thought, okay, what am I going to do? Because we had lost our background tracks. I'd lost my electric guitar. We lost our microphones, but the room was actually a little smaller than this one, so that wasn't too bad. I'd lost my keyboard. The only thing we had left was the accordion, my acoustic guitar, and a horrifically out-of-tune church piano. That's all we had. <laughs> so, what, uh, what the devil means for evil, God meant for good, because this is one of the things we did to fill the time that night. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Jesus said 